When I first found out I was having a granddaughter, I immediately started looking for a pink Mopar muscle car. Oh, there it is. Look at that. It is. It's got pink. Pink all over the floors. Pink yeah. everywhere, yeah. It's a pink car. I've been looking forever. I can't believe it. That's awesome. There it is. You're gonna look for a good Mopar, but try to find a good pink Mopar. Good luck with that. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Very deep in the Pacific Northwest. One team in Springfield, Oregon, takes on the impossible. Finding dead Mopar muscle and bringing it back from the grave. Award-winning master of Mopar, Mark Warman. His cousin, Doug. His daughter, Alyssa. His best friend, Royal. His painter, Will. And the rest of the GYC ghouls are restoring, resurrecting, and recreating some of the fastest, fiercest, and rarest muscle cars on the planet. This is Graveyard Cars. So right now, Will is getting ready to paint a Moulin Rouge FM3 1970 CUDA 340 automatic car. This is the very first paint car we've ever painted. I'm pretty excited. We got a 1970 CUDA here, which is my favorite car, on top of the fact it is pink. Somebody back in the day painted the car white, but it was cool because there was still a lot of original pink in there that you could see. So when it came time like color matching, stuff like that, you had a great reference for. So for me, it's really even more endearing because if you've been a fan of Graveyard Cars since the beginning, you'll remember episode one, season one, was called Emma's Car. That's because right after she was born, I went on the hunt for a real FM3 pink car, which yes, I do still have right now. And to find an FM3 pink car, a muscle car version, not just a satellite, not just a barracuda, but a muscle car, a Super B here in Oregon, that was awesome. So I spent a little bit of time on the phone with the gentleman that had the car after I had located it asked him some key questions to find out if it was truly an FM3 car because I had been through a lot of phone calls with people where they would say, yes, it's a Panther Pink car. I don't mean now is it Panther Pink. Did it start life as Panther Pink? I don't mean to waste your time. It's just, I, you said Panther Pink in the ad. I thought it was a Panther Pink car. So all it is has been painted pink, right? So after I deposed him, if you will, and found out that I believe this could truly be an FM3 car, and it's definitely pink all over it. I got Darren, my nemesis. No, give me a Dude. gun, give me a gun. And we hopped in the car and drove up to Salem to check it out. A friend of ours told us about that old Dodge out front. Is it something we could look at? Sure. You're I'm, I'm Mark. Laser Kalugan, what do you mean, Chuck? Laser? Laser Kalugan. Laser Kalugan, this is my buddy Darren. When it came to documenting this car and validating if it was a real pink car, the nice thing is, even though it had been painted orange, there was so many remnants of the original pink paint. Like on the floors, the drip rails, you could see where the paint underneath them, they had just masked off the drip rail molding, so everything was pink under there. The car had the original fender tag. This car is a real live Super B FM3 pink. So I knew in my heart of hearts that this was the perfect car for Emma. Where I'd be at is I, I'd go to the bank right now and I'd get 10 grand cash and I'd own the car if you want to sell it for that. Well, can I think about it? But just real quick here, I know you gotta go, but um, just real quick, I'll show you something. I'm pulling out my Trump card. Oh, wow. That's her. That's yeah, she born. was born three weeks ago. Emma was so adorable as a baby. She is still now, she's 10 years old now. But she was so beautiful, there was no way, and I knew there was no way, that that guy was gonna be able to say no or let me think about it or I'll get back with you. Not when you see that face, right? Trump card. It's called The Edge. It's called All's Fair and Love and War. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother, thanks. Now, as everybody watches through this old footage, keep in mind that was over 10 years ago, a decade ago, all right? Back then, I had a lot more of everything. I had more weight, had more hair, had more energy. You know, I had less wrinkles. So, that's a plus. That's, that's old footage, okay? Coming to trade because being fat, that was a long time ago, man. Besides, I was working with Darren, you know, that adds a lot to your blood pressure. Takes years off your life. 
It doesn't have a lot of mileage on it. It's like 5,000 miles or something, even less. And another neat thing about this car is I went through it. This car had only 4,000 miles on it. People wonder, well, how do you get 4,000 miles on a 1970 Super B? It's a quarter mile at a time. When we walked up to that car, you could see the fuel shutoff valve that was required in HRA back in the day to race to be able to shut that fuel off. That car got 4,000 miles a quarter mile at a time. You know, that's not the only time I've ever seen miles rack up a quarter mile at a time. There was a guy here in town, Paul Smith, about 25 years ago that bought the old Payless race car. This was a factory back in the day when like department store would sponsor a car. This was a Payless drugstore factory sponsor, 1970 Challenger. Hemi with a four speed, they had plucked the four speed out, put it in the trunk, wrapped in plastic and put an automatic in it to race it. This car had 340 original miles on it. So it happens. So when I go back and I look at that footage and I look at Emma now at 10 years old, it's just really close to my heart. Now, while that Super B was a nice low mile original survivor car that happened to have an orange paint job on it, our 70 Cuda FM3 Moulin Rouge was far from that. That car I knew was in bad shape. We had to get it disassembled right away and over to the Dipper. Okay, so the car was pretty much disassembled when it came to us. The drivetrain came in separately from the car. But I got to help my son, Eli, dismantle the car. Uh, we, we had to remove the windows, the door regulators, the fuel lines, brake lines, all the little fasteners prior to taking this car to the Dipper. So everyone knows I had a 70 Barracuda Grand Coupe when uh, Mark and I were growing up. It was Lemon Twist Yellow, one of my favorite colors. But second to that would be Panther Pink or Moulin Rouge. I just absolutely love that color. Reminds me of ice cream. This car in particular, before it got dipped, I wanted to kind of walk around it, check it out, see how much original color we had to work with before it went to the dipper. And we do have, you know, the doors had some color on them, fenders had some color on them. So it was just kind of nice to just look at the car before it got sent off. Another cool factor with this car, it's actually an original coated FM3 Panther Pink car or Moulin Rouge. A lot of people would maybe just go back and paint their cars pink. This car was built that way. Somebody painted it white. We're putting it back to pink, which is beyond amazing. Like with all of our cars, I'm always curious what it's gonna come back looking like. In the case of this Cuda, I could see so much stuff beforehand that I'm worried about the condition of it when it comes back. Another reason I enjoyed working on this car so much is when I started working here, there were so many parts around here with the name Dowell on them. It related me to my mother's maiden name. That made the car especially special to me was seeing my mother's maiden name all over the parts. And, and it's really a, a wonderful family. When they brought the drivetrain in, it was so nice to meet these people. Just really enjoyed working on this car. When this car came back from the dipper, it was exactly what I thought, really bad shape. You notice the flies buzzing around me? There's a reason for that. That's because Will was doing his lit interviews here, right before me, and you know they like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> They'll realize this is the angel dust over here. Well, not the, no. Anyway, that's why there's flies. That's the point. As I was saying, when the car came back, it was every bit as bad as I thought it was gonna be, maybe even worse. This car needed absolutely everything on it in the way of sheet metal, except for maybe five or six parts. That means George spent eight weeks, hands-on, 40 hours a week, doing all the metal work on this car. Not to bore everyone to death with how many parts, but just to give you an example. So the parts that we replaced on this car, main floor, right and left step wells, under seat pan, trunk pan, trunk floor extensions, rear body panel, Rear body panel reinforcement, rear cross member, both extensions, inner and outer wheelhouses, left and right inner fenders, windshield opening all the way around, upper cowl panel, lower cowl panel, firewall, Dutchman panel, both quarter panels, and every bolt-on part to go with it. Literally, there were only a handful of parts that weren't replaced on it. We even ended up replacing on the right-hand side a section of the hinge pillar, and on the left-hand side, the entire hinge pillar. 
So in addition to the parts that we were able to replace, this CUDA had the same one that our black Hemi car had, that the most recent car we showed you had on that charger. The inner structure of the roof was completely rotted. We had to hand fabricate 50 pieces to go in that thing. That's how we ended up with eight solid weeks of metalwork on that car. Is it all worth it? Absolutely. It's another car coming back from the grave. Once all the metal work was complete, it was time for me to mix up a small amount, do a spray out and see what we have for color, see if it's a good match. We have our PPG computer in our reference room. It's a nice computer. It gives you all the colors that we need. We keep it in there just so that way it stays clean, dust free, and it's very nice and sanitary. However, there is a downside to having it in there. So the first thing you do on the computer is you gotta log in. Unfortunately, when I go to log in, Mark got me again with some more of his silliness. <laughs> his passwords are all the same. It's all Mopar based in one way or another. Um, in this circumstance, so I don't know what it is. <laughs> Mark can be very ridiculous and definitely very exhausting. <laughs> So once the silliness is all over and behind us, I can actually go ahead, get the code in there and get the formula. So I can look up the formula and the first thing I do is I go to code. I hit search and voila. It's interesting because Mitsubishi used this color in the 90s and it was a green. However, I'm looking for pink. So here we go. It's Panther pink or Moulin Rouge. It's a 1970 only color. You know, it's a Chrysler color and the mixing code is DBC 2260. The prime means there's no alternate formulas. Some colors have a lot of different variants, um, selections to choose from. This particular color, there's only one. So I select that, hit enter, then it brings up the next menu. The next window is the toners itself, and this is the formula that makes up the color. I'm only doing a spray out, so I only need to mix up 16 ounces to see how it looks. Before I can mix the color, I just have to select the amount, and then I can mix it. I can select one ounce. The problem is when you make such a small amount, some toners don't even go in. So you actually need to make the 16 ounces. That way you're getting enough of each color and your color is gonna be more accurate at the end. It'll take approximately three gallons to paint the whole car. Once I have the amount already selected, I just print my label, go right back out to the mixing room and start mixing the paint. Before I start mixing colors, I get all the paint out that I'm gonna use. In this circumstance, it's only four toners. First thing I do is zero out the scale and then start adding the first toner. So the first toners are 1679 red and it requires 215.5 grams. So the second color is also a red and it's 1692. We're gonna use an accumulative formula, meaning the scale is gonna count for us. So we take the 1692 to 398 grams. The next toner is 1684 white. And with the white, we take it to 495.3. So the last toner is 1609, which is a Quindo Violet, which really gives you a, a real rich color. And we top that off at 538.1, and that's it. So this is the best part, is when you get all your toners in, you start stirring it up, and you actually watch the color change to what it's supposed to be. Then at that point, we can just reduce it, and we're ready to spray it out. This car had a lot of metal replaced on it. You know, we do our normal jam work when the car's apart, that way you can get reached to those areas, but we had to replace almost everything. When those quarters are off, it's nice to do the sound deadener. You have a nice, beautiful surface to work on. You apply that just like the way factory did. You have to let that sit overnight because if you paint it too soon, it'll actually re-soften it and make a mess. You let that sit overnight, and then I go in, I put my base coat on, clear coat, a little bit longer of a process because it wasn't available in single stage, but the overall quality of work is 10 times better. Mark likes to overpaint with everything, and that's okay. When it comes to epoxies, sealers, all that stuff, we do it. But at this point, I can just have Noah take over. When you're jamming these cars, there's a lot to it. You just don't go in there and blow color in there. You gotta prep it. That means all those hard to reach spots have to be sanded, cleaned, actually ready for paint. All these areas have to be scuffed for adhesion. If you don't do that, your paint's not gonna stick. Once we got the panels all prepped, we get the color shooken up and then we're ready to go. Okay, so I found out that this color was only available in 1970. And this was the first one that we did here in this Moulin Rouge color. It just made it so much more enjoyable to see this color so bright that we'd never seen before. Mark says the only reason that I love this color so much was because it was related to the Pink Panther movies. 
Well, yes. I mean, I did love the movies, but it also reminds me of ice cream. <laughs> Hey ghouls, in a previous episode of Graveyard Cars, we restored this gorgeous one-owner 1969 Plymouth GTX. The color name is Seafoam Turquoise. What was the code? Was it B5T5Q5? If you think you know the answer, stay tuned after the break. We'll let you know how you did. All right, folks, how did you do on that one? If you were a Graveyard Cars fan, you probably saw that episode. What sales code did they call the Seafoam Turquoise? If you said T5, you're absolutely wrong. <laughs> we have done some T5 cars, but that car is Q5. B5 represents blue fire metallic. T5 represents bronze fire metallic. And Q5 represents Seafoam Turquoise one of the most beautiful and rare colors to go on any Mopar ever. With the paintwork ready to go on our 1970 Cuda, I'm gonna stop because I get to do stuff like that because I'm Mark Warmer for Graveyard Cars season 15. I don't have to have a segue, I just do what I want to do, right? Everybody here loves the paint cars, we just don't see very many of them. Recently I had one literally fall into my lap. Gentleman that I sold one of my cars to happened to have bought this little Challenger FM3 pink car. And because he bought one of my cars that was already done, he said he didn't need that one. Would I like to buy it? And I said, hell yes. So I'm gonna grab Will and just walk around that car real quick with you, show you some of the things. I know he likes that color. I like that color. Dougie loves that color. Everybody does. But this car is an A6670 Challenger four-speed air conditioning FM3. So is it one of one? You tell me. So you'll notice that the pink all over the engine compartment is protruding through the black. Yeah. All right. You have a tattoo, don't you? A pink tattoo? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Why isn't it pink? Because I have dark skin, so this doesn't like show up bright pink. Racist. <clears throat> I'd like you to decode the fin, not decode it, because I know you can't do that, but just help me out here. A few things that are very, very neat and unique about this car. On that fender tag, is there an H, Hotel 51, H51? Obviously. Obviously. And what would that represent? See, so you're doing it again. I'm just asking. You know, I don't know, I don't know this. Okay, air conditioning. So just that's say air conditioning. Rare, that's a very rare Just say rare air conditioning. Okay. And with so it, it's got the H51, which is the air conditioning for people at home. Thank but you. But you don't want to do it that way. You want to just kind of beat me down about it. I'm sorry, you're right. And that was the wrong approach. And I, to your mother, God rest her She's soul. She's still alive. Uh, no, she I better know. be alive by the time she airs. She's you're going to feel really She's bad. Alive. She's alive. She's alive. I was just saying, sorry, you need to grow up, camera boy. All right. If you got H51, there should be a 26 on that tag up at the top. A 26? Yep. See a 26 somewhere? Maybe towards the end at yeah. the very, very top? Okay. That means it gets a 26 inch radiator. Max okay. cooling. You also got max cooling if you didn't have air conditioning and had a 340. So if you had a 340 with or without air, you got 26 inch. That's what that is. All right. See, that was good. A66 cars came standard, but you could have upgraded it, came standard with manual, heavy duty, 11 inch drum brakes. Okay. You notice on this hood, no crush zone. Look down through there. Even though this is, what's the uh, schedule production date on the car? S second row up and the second to the last digit on the right. Zero. Yeah, keep going to your left now. And there's three little digits there. What do they say? Well, there's a there's a bunch of numbers. No, no, but they're broke. They're broke apart from each other in little groups of three. Four zero two. And that means what? April. Yep. April second, nineteen seventy, is when the car was made. Late seventy, they started putting the crush zone style hoods on, but this one still has the original, and you can tell that it's pink in there. Right. Has the original hood on it. One of the other really cool things, what is the mirror code? What, do you have a 
G code on there. Anything that starts with the letter G as in golf or go or green or goo goo. G. Nope, no G. No G. They no dropped the mirror code on this car. So but they must have added them to them. No, they all got a mirror code. Unless it was a standard property mirror, then it wouldn't get one. So right? not all. Okay. There's not a G36 or anything there somewhere? Maybe the left-hand side, third row up or so? Maybe a G36, all 36? It's pretty beat up, but I could see the makings of a G36. Okay. That is our left-hand and right-hand outside racing mirrors painted. What better car would you want painted mirrors on? Right. I love it. Absolutely. Let's walk around this beast. Let's do a quick rock around. I know you're pretty interested in this stuff. Not really. No, I would be interested if you actually, like, cared. Okay, but what you have to do see, is... See, right now, it's the, your cameras are rolling, so it's just your routine. I see. But I've been with you for, like, 25 years, and not one time in 25 years, you went, oh, actually, try to understand this, Will. <laughs> but you know that that is my teaching style, is through comedy. It's not funny. <laughs> it's funny to have millions of people at home. Millions of people don't watch. Millions of people do watch, no, sir. That's your Facebook. Yeah. No, millions of people watch at home, believe me. All right, we, we I'll look at the air in, in 36 countries, even though there isn't 36 countries. Have you noticed the pink? Yes, okay. I have. What do you think's going on here? here? They just didn't prep the car good enough when they did it. Didn't scuff it? Right. Because you don't even see any scuff marks Nothing, in. not at all. They just sprayed right over the top of it. Huh. Have you ever had anything delaminate from not no, scuffing it? not at all. If I was in the paint booth with you right now, and you were getting ready to paint this car, and I saw a little area right you here. You wouldn't. What would I call it? Come on. Tiny. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Tiny. There's your dual outside mirrors. Yeah. Code. 66? Six, uh, <laughs> Something like this. Close. A66 is the 340. We just talked about this one like three seconds. Yeah, I know, but this isn't real. No, but it is. This isn't real. No, it really is a G36. Well, no, car. I believe. This really is a G36 I believe, car. No, what you're doing is not real. No, what I'm trying to do is teach you something through comedy. Go to the ear with a point and the heart with a story. Professor Morris Massey, 1981. Okay, you see? This is what my life's all about. I agree. Okay, so that, you're saying everything in my life is just fictitious. What does that X represent? That it gets a vinyl top. That it gets a vinyl top, that's right. I know. But... Why would they need to put an X on there? What does that tell the assembly line workers besides it gets the vinyl top? It probably gets the moldings. Yes, the moldings have to be drilled out. That's right. right. That's right. Straight, sit, solid, clean car. You see all that? Real nice bottoms of the quarters aren't rusted. It is a nice car. It's a very, very nice car. This is going to be a good one. So you see the holes for the spoiler? Yeah. This is not a spoiler car. So okay. you did not see a J78? Sorry, it's not a J81 car, okay? It's not a rear spoiler wing Well, then why type. did you just say 78? Because I wanted to see if you were gonna say, yeah, yeah, it wasn't there. I'm just playing with you. So it didn't bit. work? Did you see an M21 on the car? <laughs> not answer. On the, did you see an M21 on the fender tag? No, I didn't look over the whole fender tag. Okay, that is drip rail moldings. So it is an M21. 21, okay. like blackjack. Uh, what was it? Uh, he loves it. No, I don't. Remember that? No, uh, I don't. Wesley Snipes, passenger 57 is when he's on the phone in the, in the little back in that area of the plane and he's calling the bad guy on the phone and, they, and it's, it's kind of a semi close up, they call it a semi close on him. And he says, you ever play roulette? And you don't hear the other guy, but the other right. guy says, yeah. Right. And then Wesley Snipes says, right before he says it, the camera pushes in. You ever play roulette? Always bet on black. <laughs> Hangs up the phone. Then they cut back to the other guy and he's mad. Yeah, I think that's racist. This is racist? Yeah. M21's racist? Well, you made it that way. Okay, let's take a look down this side of the car. Okay, so over here you see we do not have the flip top gas cap. And do you know why that is? No, I don't, but that's actually kind of surprising. Well, it isn't because... Yeah. See? Challenger... That's all you have to Challenger do is just... R yeah. Challenger RTs do not get a flip top gas yeah. cap standard. It's optional. Most it's of the cars also... we do have them. Yeah, a lot of them do because people add them. So, so but, but we don't add things at graveyard cars. We're not sellouts. <laughs> I don't know what the face is about. <laughs> you, Mr. Sellout, you and the owner of this car sold out. I have an MD from Harvard. No? 
I am board certified in cardiothoracic medicine and trauma surgery. No, you're not. I have been awarded citations from seven different medical boards in New England, and I am never, ever sick at sea. So I ask you, when somebody goes into that chapel and they fall on their knees and they pray to God that their wife doesn't miscarry or that their daughter doesn't bleed to death or that their mother doesn't suffer acute neurotrauma from post-operative shock, who do you think they're praying to? Now you go ahead and read your Bible, Dennis, and you go to your church and with any luck, you'll win the annual raffle. The Panther Pink Moulin Rouge, that came out in 1970 in January. You couldn't get it on the early car. So if anybody's got an August, September, October, November, December build car and it's pink, you're lying. Because the first time it was available, even if you look at the factory technical data sheet on it, was January 1970. I remember the ad for it. It was a big magazine ad. It was a 70 Charger, some hot looking babe in a cool summer dress, you know, they've always had those. Kind of a flower child type of thing, right? Uh, you remember the, the remember the guy in Copycat, the bad guy that was doing all the copycat killing? And he, when he was watching that campus, all those girls were dressed kind of like that. Jerry Lee Callum, that was his name, or uh, David Lee Callum. Anyway, he told Sigourney Weaver to send him a, a pair of her squirrel covers, her panties. And then he had a lisp when he said panties. It was very creepy. What are we doing again? I'm sure Will will do a fantastic job on this car, as he should. I trained him, number one. Number two is he has the best everything. He, I've given him everything. He's got the best paint booth, the best materials, the best paint gun, the best environment, the best circumstances. Time is of no essence at all. He can take forever to do one of these, as he's proven many times. I had nothing when I started my shop. 1985, I was shooting cars outside. I don't tell the fire marshal. Nitrocellulose lacquer, an old siphon gun, one of those $5 Astro guns. I mean, that's ridiculous. And, and, and you made it work. You spent days doing the cut and buff on it later, but when it was done, it came out fine. He's got the best of everything. I expect it to come out perfect. Mark and his silliness inspecting these cars, there's nothing to inspect. I've been doing it a long time. He just likes to be on camera. He tries everything he can to get a joke. And it's just routine every single car he does this, but I know it needs to happen and I have no problems executing it. My job is to make sure he does his job. So yeah, I go in there and I make sure he's doing it right. It's not some desperate plea for attention. When you're doing a base coat with PPG, it has to be reduced obviously to get it to spray and that's one to one. Painting a car is like washing a car. I always start with the top and then work my way down. You know, I don't want to be a micromanager here and I don't want to pick on his style. Everybody has their own unique style, but his is absolute insanity. He's standing next to a fender. The name of the game is have that arm all the way over to here. Reach, reach that fender. He's walking up and down it, back and forth, back and forth. You gotta be a hawk. You gotta be an eagle with a big wingspan. I'm not a bird. When I wanna go somewhere, I have feet, I walk. And you get to the door, you take two steps to the right, you get to the door. Nice long extension, breathe through the nose, breathe through the nose. If you need to pass it off to your other hand, you should, you're ambidextrous. Come all the way over to here. If your rotator cuff's a little blown up, grab it from there and go on. My gun technique's great. I have no problems with it. It's been the same, it's like a, ro you know, it's robotic. I'm exactly the same amount, distance away. My don't shake, it's, it's, what I've been, it's what I do. It's what I've been doing my whole life. But he's running around in there, he's shaking all over the damn place. You see him painting the hood up and down like that? It looks like Michael J. Fox is in there painting a the car, man. I guess in the end, if it comes out, good. But you know, that's why he needs to borrow a couple more branches from the ice tray. When I'm in there, I'm ice cold. I lay that thing out, 45 degree panel adjacent, 50% overlap. Everything, the air pressure, the ambient temperature is perfecto. That is why, pass off to the left hand, they call me the ice tray. He's in there, he's just all, he's like melted ice, just flowing everywhere, paint running all over the place, shaking up and down. Looks like he's been doing nothing but cocaine and espresso beans for four days straight and hasn't slept, you know? Be cool, man. 
be cool. That was some Matt Foley. <laughs> you want to see you want to see crappy technique? Watch Mark paint a car. He can't paint a car. His little wrist won't hold it anymore. I'm ready to start clearing. I use the 2002 clear. It's thick, high solids, great PPG product. So temperature's everything on these cars. And these camera guys know if it's 100 degrees, it's gonna be a 100 degree day, we gotta get in early and paint because what'll happen is that paint's drying quicker than what you need it. These guys will come in at like four in the morning with me, you know, on, on hot, hot days. So you like to be at 65 to 70, maybe even 80 uh, degrees is kind of the sweet spot for that paint to dry. I like to be able to put a nice, even, beautiful first coat on give it 20 minutes, give or take, and then go apply my second coat, wait 20 minutes, and then I'll apply my third. See more of that crazy stuff, right? You see it? He's all over the place. It's like watching a tennis match. Back and forth, he's jumping over the net. Just plant your feet, spread your wings, become ice cold, man. That jumping all over the place, I just, that would be exhausting for me. He must feel like he ran a damn marathon. I haven't seen Forrest Gump didn't walk and run that much. Pete, don't, don't indulge him. You know so well my technique is good. You know what I do is great. Don't, don't humor Mark with this. You're wasting my time. So despite all Mark's silliness, all that's behind us, he just likes to you know, get that camera time. The car is done, it looks amazing, and I couldn't be happier with it. He's sick, that's his problem. The car's perfect, and that's my problem. We cut and buff all of our cars. It takes little imperfections that everybody gets, a dirt nib, we really don't get any runs, but dirt, orange peel, it makes the car flat, it makes it look just like a million bucks. So we'll start with 800 grit on a long board, block the whole entire car, all that clear, flat again. And then at that point, he'll grab his DA, take out the 800 with 1200, then he'll use 2000 to get out the 1200, then he'll use 3000 to get out the 2000, then at that point, it's like a sheet of glass and it buffs in seconds. You know, every car is different. This particular car had undercoating from the factory, so we're just obviously going to duplicate that. As far as like a technical aspect, you can look at it and say, oh wow, that looks really easy. But there's a lot that goes into it. Making sure it looks good before you do anything. And a lot of people will put too much on to cover up butchery. We don't do that here. And the great thing is you, get, you have rotisseries. You have to turn these things almost upside down just to make sure you get every area. I like to put a nice, even, good, thorough coat, all parts and pieces and every angle to get the whole thing covered. That way, when the owner has the car or people see it at car shows, you can see the work that we did with nice, clean spot welds. Everything is very sanitary and it looks amazing. So this is part of my job, is to get the upper control arms, lower control arms, all of the drivetrain components ready to bolt back into the car. This is a favorite part of my job. Now this was kind of a unique car in as much as all we did was the body and the paintwork on it. Our job was not to build the engine, the transmission, the rear end. The owner chose to do that himself. And he did a good job. I mean, overall, I'm not saying anything at all disparaging. It's just that if you were to slow the camera down a little bit and look closely, there's just a few detailing items, but they don't matter to him, they don't matter to me. I didn't get paid to do it. I just want to point that out. Our job was to install that drivetrain once the body and paint was done, so we'd have an easy, safe way to get the car transported home. One of the best parts of my job is watching these cars transform from what they were when they came in to what they look like when they leave. And uh, everybody knows I don't like to brag about stuff like that. But I mean, literally, this shop is taking cars that are absolute garbage in some cases. Nothing really left, very little redeeming value or quality to them and bringing them back to life. Look back through my original photos before we even got the cameras rolling on it and look at the dire straits that car was in. And now look at it as it gets this drivetrain in it and we start putting the final pieces on it. It's a beautiful, looks new FM3 Moulin Rouge 70 Cuda. So yeah, I think I've earned the name Ice Tray. I don't think I just self-dubbed, I think I've earned it. I don't even know what it means. Except that Eddie Murphy played a character named Ice Tray in Showtime. Spelled the same way. <laughs> Showtime! You replay Miss Ganda. 
So Mark and I have been working on these cars since we were 16 years old. We have so much experience with these cars, we know exactly what we're gonna do. It's just routine for us. We can almost anticipate each other's moves. Who's gonna do this, who's gonna do that? We just go with the flow. It's wonderful to be able to work together this well. So this car is just a paint and body. I'm not gonna put the entire car together. We are going to be installing all the glass except for the windshield. So that means the roof rails have to be installed so we can adjust the height of the quarter glass and the door glass to each other so they don't go up too high. The headliner has to be installed so we can set the back glass in. I agree with Mark, seeing the Moulin Rouge on this car, it's just awesome to see a completely different color come through this shop. The glass mechanism is a bunch of different things. We got the window run channels, we got the regulators, and a hundred different fasteners that have to be installed in these doors. All of these things have to work in unison with each other to make sure that the fitment is good and the window can roll up and down with ease. It's great to see the door glass and the quarter glass fit together really good like they were supposed to from the factory. In 2016, we unveiled this beautiful FJ6 71 Cuda tribute car at the SEMA show in Las Vegas. True or false, the Mopar crate engine we put in it was the Hellcat. If you think you remember, stay tuned after the break. I'll let you know how you did. All right, folks, welcome back. How'd we do on that one? Isn't that a beautiful car? Look at that thing. True or false, was the engine that we installed, the famous 707 horsepower Hell Crate Hemi? If you said false, good job again. You got it exactly right. The Hell Crate was not out at that time. We installed the 392, and the reason we unveiled it at the Mopar show was they had just introduced the world famous controller unit for it. This car was absolutely amazing and took the entire show by storm. We added a simulated shaker hood, rear window louvers, rear spoiler, road lamps, chin spoilers, and again, it was painted in the beautiful FJ6 sassy grass green. So I'm getting ready to put the hockey stick stripe on the Moulin Rouge 70 Cuda. I only have one set of these decals and only one day to get this done because this car leaves tomorrow. One of the last things we do on these cars after the assembly is the graphic installation. So as everybody knows, we get our stuff from Phoenix Graphics, they're fresh cuts for us, we always insist on that, so that they go on, they're not old, they're not brittle, they're not dried out, they'll fit the way that they're supposed to fit. A lot of people talk about NOS uh, decals. Well, NOS decals are great to brag about, but not to put on a car. A nice fresh one, that's the one you want to put on the car. Now in the old days, I used to have to do all of the graphics. I tried, desperately hard, to teach Alyssa and Will take the baton and run to the finish line, but they didn't, they dropped the baton. There was no finish line for them. But now I got Justin, so I handed off the hockey stick graphic to him, and I know he'll do a great job. So the process of putting the decal is no different on this car than any other car that we do. It's getting the hockey stick stripe. You got the application gel, you got the tack cloth, you got the backing paper, and you got the squeegee. So before I put the decal on, I clean the surface really good with a cleaner, and then I run a tack cloth over it. After you do the tack cloth, you know there is the application gel, or there's another trick that you can do where you do some dish soap, and then you mix it with some water. And then you can put that in a spray ball, and you spray that on, which is really great. So we make sure we got the measurements right, and everything's lined up good. And then you set that decal on there, and you just kind of set it right in place. And then you use your squeegee, work from the inside, and work your way to the outside of the decals. And then you can come back about an hour later, I give it, and then you can peel it right off. So wherever you set your first decal, wherever it is in space on that quarter, you have to make sure the other side matches that side so everything is in space and where it needs to be. Man, it just starts to pop, doesn't it? Wow. It's 
get a 340 on there. And then this side is done. My favorite part of the hockey stick is the engine call out, which is an H code, which is a 340. The only color that you could get in the hockey stick stripe was glossy black. So if you see anybody else out there with a white decal, red decal, that's actually completely aftermarket and somebody customized that and got that put on their car. I just finished putting the hockey stick stripes on the 1970 Cuda. It went smooth. It had to go smooth because we only had one set and the customer will be here tomorrow. Hopefully when Mark gets back, he can check it out, sign it off, and it's ready for the customer. That little decal, that little V6X black hockey stick stripe just sets off the car on a 70 Cuda. If it, it, it wasn't a haphazard design. It flows with the quarter panel and follows the style line into the door. It really punches the sexiness of the quarter panels and the door and the style lines on a 70 Cuda. This car was very rewarding. Not only was it like my dream car, almost exactly, the car came out great. From the metal department, the body guys, the cut and buff guys, everyone did a great job. I love the pink, it's just, you don't see it. And the fact that's what Mopar did in the 70s is absolutely insane. What guy wants a pink muscle car? So the rarity of it on top of what car it is, by far my favorite and I was excited to be able to do it. Some reveals, you know, we do big, big shows. You know, some people just don't want it, they just want their car back. Some folks can't wait to get in here and look at it and maybe be part of the, the filming. These folks weren't necessarily that way, they were more behind the scenes people. In this circumstance, we didn't do a big reveal, but when you do a car that's body and paint only, that's all you have to look at. And he couldn't be happier, which makes me super happy, and it's another car out of here. At the end of the day, we get to work on the greatest cars ever made, and we have an amazing team working here. Making someone's dream come true is just the icing on the cake, and I'm just blessed to be a part of this. So the folks that own this car are gonna be so thrilled with this car when they take it home. I know they're gonna love this forever. I know I would. He brought his daughter down, who is actually getting the car. It's going to be her car, so good job for her. She's uh, very excited. It really is a wonderful reward to see that trailer going down the road and knowing that we brought another dead car back to life and in a fantastic way. And that's why I do what I do. For the love of the car, the love of the owners, and to see those cars come back to life. And cash, <laughs> you know? I mean, I don't go to Safeway and, and pull up a great big grocery cart full of emotions and say, will that cover it? <laughs> Cause you're going out of there in handcuffs and then you gotta go to jail, you know? No. Cash, bumps and burners, nice little earners. Ka-ching. So, now I'm just doing that for you guys to be funny, so don't make sure the editors know not to leave that in there, because just leave it on how sentimental I am. People love that